Welcome to How to Build a Tent. This show is not about tent building, but how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening and watching the show. I'm so excited. We have Jenna Wellen, a local artist here that's just doing an amazing job on the island. I wanted to have her on to talk about art, her style, and how she decided to get into art, and then also just kind of the business aspects of it. I think art is a very applicable uh, trade, a business to that can apply to many different areas of businesses, graphic design, programming, things that have um, an intrinsic cost above, just like this is what it does and uh, that's how much I'm going to pay for it because I know what it does and it's a function, but it's also something that, I don't know, what do you call it? Um, pleasing to the eye. Um. Right. Yeah. It, um, I mean, art, it just has a lot of like, it has a lot of like your own emotion behind it too. So, I mean, it's, everything's created from your talents and time and skills. Mm. And like, how do you put a price on that? And I think that can be true about web design and your websites and people that are running your social media sites. And if you're th having like an idea or a thought about going into those kinds of fields, this is going to be definitely applicable for you. Before we get into that, the show is part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast network. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com, put in HTBT in the memo field. You'll get this sweet mug for free. You can drink along with me, whatever you want to put in that mug. Uh, if you want to reach out to me with any questions, comments, anyone you want me to interview, you can find me at How to Build a Tent. You can email me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. Jenna Wellen, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for being here, and thank you mm -hmm. for bringing along this beautiful art. Yes. Before we get into it, where can people find out more about you or reach out to you about purchasing some art? So the best way to get in touch with me is to contact me, um, probably just via social media, um, Jenna Wellen Art on Instagram, Jenna Wellen on Facebook, um, and then my website is Jenna Wellen Art as well. And it's easiest just to contact me directly if you see something you might be interested in. Great. And how do you spell your last name? W-E-L-L-E-I-N. All right, perfect. And we'll put the links and her links to your social media sites in the show notes so you can uh, click on those right now. All right, so this is really beautiful, unique art. Thank you. Can you kind of talk to us about like how, or what your style is, like how you came up with this style and kind of just why you decided to pick this style? So um, basically, I guess I'm inspired by living in Hawaii. Um, I've always kind of painted um, sort of elements and um, moving to Hawaii is definitely, made the colors brighter, made everything happier. Um, yeah. And I think just like inspired by the water and I mean, ultimately all my works, whether it's my abstract or my waves, everything is kind of focused on just color, movement and texture. So, um, you know, I kind of, impl um, I guess, create the texture of the lava rocks and the earth and, you know, the texture of the waves just in sort of every painting. Um, and so that's, to me, that's sort of my inspiration and that's what, what drives my work. Um, and yeah, I just, I love the ocean. <laughs> That's great. And I hope you can tell if you're watching this, the texture of our art, it's really unique. It's like 3D art and I, I just love it. It's really great. Thank you. So when did you decide to be an artist? Did you just come up, was it a hobby? Is it something you found when you were bored? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, I've always painted every day, my whole life pretty much. Since watercolors um, as a kid. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's totally where it started. Uh -huh. And um, I... I just wanted to do it every day and I always wanted to, I guess, create and I would always tell my husband I wish I could just win the lottery and, you know, quit whatever day job I had and, and just be an artist. Mm -hmm. And um, after my son was born and we moved here, I felt like I needed to go back to work at a certain point and my husband really encouraged me at that time. He said, you paint every day, just start marketing it and see what happens and it's it's been great. So. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. So what is it like to be a mom and being a painter, business lady. Yeah, so that's, um, I guess, my kid is really my driving force and, you know, just trying to, I guess, be a good example to him and be, you know, just like a well-rounded parent and trying to balance work and home life. Um, it is it is really challenging at times, but um, I guess it kind of it sort of helps put me in a direction, I guess, business-wise, where I just want to create and 
be a mom. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of, I guess, unique where, you know, a lot of artists don't necessarily, um, you know, they might want to promote their own work or, you know, maybe just do their own sales. Um, I prefer to be in galleries because I don't have time for those things necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like I just want to create and be a mom. Yeah, and you so. just delegate the business exactly. side as much as possible. Yeah. So you wanted to be a painter your whole life. Did mm -hmm. you go to school to be a painter? I did not. You didn't? No. Why didn't you? Um, that's a good question. I think I was held back by my own insecurities yeah. and I just felt like it was a hobby. And mm -hmm. it, it is interesting because, you know, I was even told at one point that I, you know, even though I painted every day, I wasn't necessarily a real artist, you know, back before I started marketing my work um, because I didn't have an art degree. And I would argue now that I'm a, a real artist, I guess, and I still don't have the degree. So I think it helped me find my own style and my own brand. And it, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I don't have an art degree because I've found myself. That's basically. really interesting. I've talked about a few shows ago of just from a business perspective, not even like the application of it, but like how worthless an art degree is <laughs> just from like the cost benefit analysis. Right. Because like how hard it is to make it like you, as you know. Right. But then like how much money you pay to get a degree and yep. not a guarantee that you are going to make it. And right. And you're going to use your degree for something else. Or totally. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm like just from a business perspective mindset of paying for it and student <laughs> loans and all that stuff it's not worth it at all so it's right. interesting to see from you like yeah it was good you didn't go because right. you got to find your own style absolutely and i i mean i do have i guess i do have a degree that i also don't use so that's interesting <laughs> yeah. um but i would say anybody trying to pursue a career as an artist i would say the most important thing is to get like a marketing degree and learn how to promote yourself as a business and just learn how to run a business that's and that's i think that's the most important thing because mm -hmm. you can be the most amazing artist in the world but if you don't know how to market to people they're not gonna be able to find you yeah so. that's what i love about the business discipline altogether mm -hmm. is it's applicable to anything you end up doing in some way absolutely and i just love that okay so you were encouraged by your husband. Miles is a great guy. Shout out to Miles. So great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to get into it. So how mm -hmm. did you get into it? Like, what was your first step for somebody who is also maybe a little insecure about their art? They're mm -hmm. not sure if they can make it. Like, what were your first steps and what would you suggest them to do? So I, um, I just kind of started putting my art in these little markets and fairs and um, art on the zoo fence was a big start for me. Um, it's like a local art market and it's been around for years. And um, my, my friends and my family and neighbors and everybody just started showing support and buying pieces a little bit at a time. And, and it just kind of grew from there. My confidence grew from there, most mm -hmm. importantly, so. That's interesting. How did you get over those like insecurities, like to finally just uh, take the step? Um, it it took a long time. It it really did, and I, I think the the validation from people really really helped me, um, and just kind of you know getting over those those moments of rejection, which are going to happen in this business or or any business really, um, yeah. and just kind of moving forward. And every day that you have a bad day. Just, keep going. Mm -hmm. Was there something special that you did to like handle rejection? Um, Go have a stiff drink? Or <laughs> basically, yeah, the wine, glass uh -huh. of wine. Um, mm -hmm. No, it's, it's going to happen and yeah. it's going to happen to everybody. So just, you just have to keep going. Yeah, like one of, I kind of treat rejection like any other barrier that you would run into in business where you take it for what it is and you try to see if there's anything you can learn from it and know if you need to correct course from it right. and then you move on from it. Yes, and that's really don't smart. focus on it, don't dwell on it because mm -hmm. whatever you focus on, that's gonna be the largest thing in your mind and your vision. Right. So you wanna focus on the positive, your son, whatever mm -hmm. your inspiration is for your art or your business, like what your passion is for whatever product you're selling. You wanna use those critiques, you wanna use those discouraging rejection, rejecting moments as kind of guides mm -hmm. to see if you can improve, but then move on from it. Right. I think that's the best thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. So you've been blowing up. Recently, you were on TV on the yeah. local station here, and you were also part of a Neiman Marcus f uh, event foundation. Yeah, we. You want to talk um, about that? So uh, two other local artists and myself, we started Three for the Sea, um, and it's a benefit for. Mm -hmm. 
um, three local foundations, so Kokua Hawaii, um, Sustainable Coastlines, and H&L Tool Library, and they all kind of focus on um, environmental conservation. And so we we basically did this um, this show with Neiman Marcus hosting. They were amazing, and um, and then thirty percent of our our profits, our sales, are going to benefit those foundations. So it was a huge hit, and even Senator Gabbard came out to show support. He's a big wow. environmentalist here. Yeah. That's great. I love that because, like, you know, being a conservative, I hate the whole global warming thing. Right. But this is really cool because, you know, as Christians, we are say that we're supposed to be good stewards of the earth and, like, pick up and all the plastic and things like that. And that's what you guys Absolutely. are doing. Yeah. And I just love seeing that because it's, like, easy for us just to, like, reject as conservatives. I'm speaking for myself. I'm not going to put you in this <laughs> basket. But it's easy to be like, oh, nature stuff. They're just trying to push an agenda. But, like, yeah, we are supposed to take care of nature and we're supposed to, like, pick up after ourselves. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's just good housekeeping. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, you know, it, it, so you live in Hawaii and you look at these beautiful beaches and everything that we have here and... And it's just when it's littered with trash, it's like it just doesn't need to be like, mm -hmm. you know, we could all just work together and tidy up a little bit. So that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. And so cool. It's so cool to see you like doing Thanks. that stuff. That's awesome. It's like you have so much success and then being able to do things to like use that for good as well. That's really cool. Absolutely. I think it's um, I think it's important to, you know, mm -hmm. like what you do, you know, you promote promote the good things in your life as well. So, yeah, for yeah. sure. All right. Let's talk a little bit more about your art here. We got small pieces. Is this a medium piece or small? Yeah, piece? I feel like it's a medium. And then you have mm -hmm. some big pieces, too, yes. which you should send me so I can throw them up on the screen. OK, so I can see, too. Perfect. Can you talk about a little bit about um, your pricing uh, and just like what people could, you know, I don't know, like for people interested in these small pieces, like how do they get them? Like, cause not everyone listening is on the island. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's where I think just contacting me, I always keep these um, small pieces in stock and they're mm -hmm. available in galleries as well. But um, I, you know, I usually don't keep my website as updated as I should again, okay. because I'm juggling that, that mom balance. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then pieces move so fast. They go to different galleries. I restock galleries and shows as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, Basically, I mean, my minis, they're my, they're my smallest pieces that I keep in stock and um, they go for between 80 to a hundred dollars. Um, and it's all, it's all original art. So I actually don't offer prints at this time. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't yet, but I'm, I'm looking to see if that's going to be a good fit for a few of my pieces. That. Why do you think? Keep original. Like <laughs> you're, you're being successful. You're high end. Mm -hmm. Everyone's in demand. It's like, don't do prints. Just right. stay with this original, the original pieces. I don't know. That's my non-artistic experience. Well, and advice. I like that too because I, <laughs> I do love creating. That's why I do it. Is because mm -hmm. I want to paint each piece, and I, I feel like I would lose that um, a little bit with prints. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't get to have my hand on every single thing that has my name on it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree. And uh, so it's not a problem to ship like to oh, no. the states or whatever. I mean, especially the small pieces. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's actually really easy. And I mean, I've never had a, a problem with shipping. <laughs> um, and even even the larger pieces, and I actually just shipped um, two 36 by 48 inch abstracts uh -huh. um, to California last week. So, um, and it's, it's really no issue. You That's just box awesome. them up. And, so wherever mm -hmm. you are around the world, mm -hmm. there's not a limitation. You can get your hands on this beautiful art. <laughs> now, my question for you is like, how did you figure out the shipping? Like oh, yeah, that was um, that was a, a learning process for mm -hmm. sure, because it's it's interesting. Like even just a you know the difference of a couple inches in in thickness can mean the difference of a couple hundred dollars sometimes. Really? So wow. okay. Um, and then I mean, ultimately the goal is to make sure that the painting gets there safely. Mm -hmm. So finding finding that balance of you know you don't want to put it in between pillows. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it was very difficult, but I mean, I'm learning as I go and mm -hmm. just as long as it arrives safely, we're so good. This might be a stupid question, but does it like ship with the frames or is it like rolled mm -hmm. up? Okay. So some artists do, um, they will take it off the frame and just ship the canvas rolled. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't do that because I purchase, um, I purchase all my canvas pre-stretched on frames and I want to preserve the exact look of it, especially since I wrap the texture around the edges. Mm -hmm. um, so they do arrive just like that in padded box. Perfect. So. Ready to hang. Yep. Ready to go. <laughs> All 
All right. So the last question I have for you is like, or it might be multiple questions in one question is what advice would you give? Like, what are the experiences that you wish someone told you when they were first starting becoming an artist or anything like you wish someone would told you when you first started out? So I, I feel like I had a lot of good advice in the beginning, um, and I still do. And a lot of that comes from, you know, our, our network here. Um, local artists are all so supportive and amazing, and everybody, everybody really works to build each other up. And so I, I do get, I mean, even still a lot of really great advice, and a lot of it is for marketing and, um, I guess just selling, learning how to sell your work. And I, I think the most important thing, truthfully, is um, to just learn how to like move forward from rejection. And I know we just kind of covered yeah. that as well. But um, you know, for every for every success story that you have in your career, there will be you know, ten times that you maybe knocked on a door, or applied to a gallery, and you know maybe didn't get in. So yeah. you just have to keep driving forward. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, that's great. It reminds me of this one father I know. I forgot where. Actually, I don't even remember where I heard from. It might have been a book I read, honestly. But one of the things he did at his dinner table is he asked his kids how they failed or were rejected. And not as like a negative thing, but as like a celebratory thing. Because in order to grow, in order to succeed, you're going to have to face those things. And if you're not trying, totally. or if you're not failing, you're not trying. If you're not like being rejected, then you're not pushing forward. Mm -hmm. And so he kind of like tried to take that negative stigma on, off of it and celebrate it like every week. And I thought that was so cool. That is really because important. I wish my parents did that. Right? No offense, parents. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was awesome. Thank you so much for coming by. And then just Thank to you. reiterate, where can they find you on the social media sites? How do you want to be contacted? Um, so Instagram, Jenna Wellen Art, and Facebook, Jenna Wellen, and then um, my website, JennaWellenArt.com. Great. Jenna, thank you so much for coming. Thank you.